guys, have you heard the news? The UC system has officially shut down SAT and ACT scores as part of both scholarship consideration and admissions consideration through spring of 2025. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what happened, what this court decision was, and I'm gonna offer some commentary as both a test prep professional and an independent college consultant about what I think of this development and what some of the implications are overall. If you're wondering who I am, my name is Brooke. I've been coaching the SAT and the ACT and doing independent college consulting for over a decade and a half. I do have a couple of online courses for the SAT and the ACT. If you happen to be in a state that's still doing them or you're applying out of state or to private colleges and you need some help, you can definitely check that out. I've also got a couple of books for the ACT math section. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, I encourage you to do so because we talk a lot about all these kind of issues. We also give free test prep tips. If you're preparing for college, I will keep you in the know not only of the news, but of what you can do to prepare yourself so you can be at a better advantage to get into these schools. The other thing quickly, we have a TikTok, an Instagram, a Facebook, and a Twitter. So make sure you follow us on social to keep up on all the latest and greatest going on in college admissions. Cool. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to say about this is, is how this all came down and why this is suddenly a headline. And some of you are like, didn't they already make the test? Test optional or test blind? or like what's going on yes is the answer what's actually kind of funny to me is this headline is like breaking news in the New York Times and like top of the New York Times right but at the same time the announcement is not that much new information because we already knew about a coalition of students advocacy groups in the Compton Unified School District that had raised a lawsuit against the University of California claiming that the use of standardized tests in any way discriminated against people because of race, wealth, and disability. And so basically the UC system announced that it was going to stop considering the SAT and the ACT as a requirement for two years, and they left it up to campuses whether to be test blind or test optional originally. And then there was an injunction served that said they have to be test blind. And so the few campuses left over that were still doing test optional had to flip to test blind for this admission cycle this fall and spring. And so since that injunction, everything's kind of the same. It's just that the injunction has now turned into a settlement. And a settlement basically means that they're not actually going to go to court and duke the whole thing out. The UC system has decided for the next three admission cycles of the fall, we are not going to be considering test scores from the SAT or the ACT at all. So we are adopting a test blind policy. So this affects, if you're wondering who it affects, it affects anyone who is in high school right now. So it is May of 2021, and if you are a freshman, a sophomore, or a junior, and you are going to be applying to the University of California system, this affects you. You do not need an SAT or an ACT score to apply to any UC, and they won't even look at it if you want them to. There are people within the UC system that disagree with this decision. We talk about that in one of our other videos where the UC faculty committee commissioned a study and found that test scores were more predictive of student success in college at UC campuses than GPA was for the first time ever. It used to be the inverse, but with great inflation, it appears that that is no longer happening or maybe people are Googling their homework. And I can't imagine with at-home schooling and COVID, cheating is going down in numbers. I would imagine it's probably going up, but that's just a hunch. So let's talk about this and what my thoughts are on it as a consultant and a test prep person. Now, some people ask, are tests unfair because of race and class? Well, it is true that test performance in some ways does correlate with wealth. That is true. The truth is that above all, educational access and quality correlates with wealth more than anything else. To me, the difference in SAT score between students comes a lot of the time down to where are they starting and how hard do they wanna work. I will also say that it is not an easy fix to just hire a tutor. I am not a magician. I coach kids and teach kids to work their bottoms off to improve on these tests. And the way that they do that is by learning serious math chops. It's not by just paying me a big check and me sprinkling some magic fairy dust on their brains or teaching them a few like magical hacks that I've reserved that I can teach you in 10 minutes. And then suddenly 10 minutes later, you're like getting a perfect score. That is not how coaching and tutoring works. Coaching and tutoring works by holding you accountable 
for working really hard. Now, I know some of you out there that are my subscribers work really hard on the SAT and ACT yourselves. So there's different levels of like how much help you can get and how much money you spend on this process. And it's true that people do spend a lot of money in some cases. But at the end of the day, if you don't bring it, if you don't do the work, and if you're not scoring highly, it doesn't matter how much money you spend on a tutor. You could spend thousands of dollars on someone, but if you don't do the work yourself, you're not gonna improve. So that's the first thing that I wanna say is like, yes, it is not necessarily fair that some people have access to tutoring or things like that. But what's even more unfair is that our entire educational system is lopsided in a way that favors the wealthy, right? Wealthy kids tend to have better access to excellent education in general. If I get a kid from the most elite high school in LA and I get a kid from like a public school that is lower ranked, where you've got to think their teachers are dealing with disciplinary action more than the ability to teach. Are we starting at different places? You bet. That's the biggest discrepancy, guys, is that our education system is not fair already and that there's already vast inequality in terms of how much skill and knowledge students have, period, when they're applying to college based on their socioeconomic class, the quality of their high school, their home environment, their access overall to counseling, to tutoring, to all of these things. Yes, that's true. And the other thing, like I said, is college admissions is about being qualified and it's about opportunity. So it's two things at once. And I think that's really the issue is as a society, we have to ask ourselves, how much weight do we want to put on the achievement end and say, we want achievers and how much do we want to put on this is opportunity and people deserve opportunity who are from diverse backgrounds. Right. And we've got to decide, too, what's the best way to identify kids who are under resourced but awesome? That's the other question we have to ask. And I think tests can be a huge part of that because a test can tell you a lot if you look at a kid in context. My biggest issue, though, with with going test blind is that if we go test blind, I don't think it's fair to go test blind when admissions are holistic. When you look at the situation, everybody's like, tests are unfair, and everybody loves to hate on standardized tests. But the truth is, the holistic admissions process is just as biased, if not more biased, than tests themselves. For example, personal essays. To me, personal essays are much easier to game than a standardized test. To game a personal essay, you know, some students have their parents write their essays for them because they can't write. And then they dumb it down a little bit to try to make it look like their kid wrote it. The other thing that I like to say is a lot of individuals, I work with a lot of individuals as a college consultant, I help coach students through the essay writing process. And what I find is that over half of my students have extremely compelling stories. And if they just have somebody to talk them through them and tell them, you know what, that's the interesting part of your story, or actually, this is really cool, why don't you talk about that? Just that kind of a conversation can be really game changing for a student's application process. But not everybody has someone who's gonna step in and do that for them. And that doesn't mean that they have any less compelling of a story to tell. It just means they don't have the ability to tell it. Fact checking and personal sob stories. Sob stories are big time cash in the bank when it comes to applying to college right now. And sob stories are something that can be fabricated. We talked about in that in one of my other videos this year. Fact checking isn't a thing that colleges do much, especially when it comes to personal details. You're not gonna fact check those. Kids embellish because they wanna get in. And that's not fair. So everybody's dogging on the tests, but at least for the test, you gotta show up and to cheat on it is really darn hard. You know, you gotta have some mastermind scheme that the FBI catches. The other factors that go in, I don't think are any more fair than tests either because wealth correlates with those two activities, right? To do super wow-like activities sometimes takes money, right? To be able to do cancer curing research and to get in the door and to hobnob your way over there, to be getting into these kind of labs and research opportunities, a lot of parents are dishing out a lot of money to give kids access to those kind of things. The other thing that gets more weight is teacher recommendations. Those are super open to bias. Teachers can be racist, they can be classist, they can be sexist, they can be all of these things. And then you're looking at teacher recommendations. So in any case, at the end of the day, I don't know if removing tests is going to make anything more fair. If anything, it's going to lower admission rates. It's going to freak you guys out more. It's going to make you guys feel even more competition for things like AP exams and grades at school and all these kind of wow factor activities. It's going to put pressure on the wow factor even more. And I don't know if that's the healthiest way to move forward and the most fair way to move forward when it comes to college admissions. Do I have all the answers? No. 
But I also think cutting an option out isn't necessarily the best option. If students have the free will to show a college some information or not show a college some information of everything else they do in their lives, why do we have to push tests out of the mix? Why can't we make that also, you know what, if you want to take a test and shine in that way, great. If it's not your thing, fine, right? If that's how we are with activities, if that's how we are with awards, why do standardized tests get shoved into a corner? I don't know if that's fair, especially when wealthier kids are going to have more access to contests, to, you know, AMC 10, AMC 12, these sort of contest math tests where they can show, oh, I'm a superstar in math. Whereas before, you could just take the SAT. If you got a perfect math SAT score, wow, that shows that you're pretty wowish there, right? And that may be even less accessible for a lot of kids. So we need to give kids more access so that awesome kids can get ahead. And I hope to do that here at Super Tutor TV with our YouTube channel. But I think access is a number one. How do we make a difference more? It's by figuring out that access equation and then allowing kids to thrive within it. That's all I've got for today. I hope you guys like this video. If so please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet, and watch more of our videos. You can find us here on YouTube. You can find us on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll see you guys there. Thanks for watching. Take care.